Hello everyone and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program 1.6 with Kerbalism. In this episode we're going to begin by time warping for basically a year to that Kerbin Duna transfer window and the goal is to figure out whether our Kerbal, Kerbals survive on our Minmus station and also in our mission around Gilly. So we will see if anything goes wrong and this will basically test whether those missions are resilient right in their construction for potentially longer missions we might use those missions as the basis for longer missions ECLSS malfunctioned on Gilly mission 1 we can repair it well we should take a look that was quick though Rumor is just sitting on Gilly waiting to be rescued we'll have to be careful not to accidentally get into render range of him um, Okay, it looks like it's in the pod itself. And somebody mentioned about ECLSS uh, potentially uh, having a problem and that being a reason for it not being a good idea to put all of our pilots on a MIMIS station. But you know, we're going to have high risk missions where there's no choice. So, hmm, repair the system. A power kick did the trick. Okay. Uh, let's do some inspections while we're out here. EV report. Okay. Yeah, we've done everything. All right. All right. So no big deal. Back to Space Center and we'll continue time warping. Incidentally, Bill has 8% stress and 7% radiation right now. Meanwhile, on Euphrates Station, we've got 19% radiation for Valentina, but only 2% stress. Philippe has 10% radiation, 3% stress, 5% uh, radiation, 3% stress for Sherber, and 2% radiation, 1% stress for Dunfrid. Okay, we can repair a data transmitter on Euphrates Station. Let's get to it. I haven't been particularly thrilled with the contracts we've been getting. So I decided to add Contract Configurator and the Bases and Stations Contract Pack. That's the only one that I think I'm going to add. All right, where's our problem? Data, oh, there it is. All right. Um, engineer, Dunford. We re did rescue an engineer, thankfully. Okay, this uh, that's out of his normal range, so EVA time. Okay, repair. Okay, another power kick apparently. Well, let's get Dumford into the hitchhiker container for now. Okay, let's see how many repairs we have to do during this year. Well, RCS malfunction on Euphrates Station. I think I'll just time warp a little bit more. And RCS blah, right now is probably not. Uh, once we turn to it, it probably is like constantly firing or something, but. Um, solar panel, all right, fine. RCS and a solar panel, geez. We're only a month into, well, no, a little bit more than that, but at least they're repairable stuff. Oh uh, yeah, it's a constantly firing RCS thruster. Constantly, I mean, it's uh, firing in all directions apparently, so that's not too bad because it's not actually net moving the station, it's just wasting fuel. Okay, back in business. And solar panel. Okay, repair. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. These EVAs don't come free, though. We are using mod propellant for them. Not a whole lot, though. Oh, solar panel failed on dual orbital scanner. And that solar panel's failed for good. Hopefully... It's just one of those redundant ones. So I, I put some redundancy on those, so. Yeah. Well, anyway, yeah. Not our main concern right now. Coronal mass ejection hit the EVE system. Oh, that's a little bit of a problem for Gilly Mission 1. We'll monitor Bill. Not too sure it's going to do anything to uh, Romore. 10% stress, 9% radiation. 
exposed to extreme radiation five rads per hour. It's a lot. And we put full shielding and everything. You know, there ought to be enough so that they if they could potentially be fully shielded. I mean, seriously, not getting much radiation at all. That doesn't seem to be the case. I put full shielding on that thing, and Bill's still got 22% radiation. So it's just not physically possible to put so much shielding that they're going to be reason you know reasonably shielded i mean what if we have a long-term mission because there are a lot of worlds out here okay there was another message i missed that solar panel malfunction on gilly mission one maybe that was it okay we repaired the solar panel i wonder if they're less likely to get into trouble if we keep them packed away or not I don't think we need the solar panel right now. It's more for when we get back to Kerbin, since that's further away from the sun right now. Probably we can do with just a few of our solar panels. Electric charge is fine. We'll see. We'll uh, keep that tucked in. So this is starting out as sort of an EVA repair episode, and maybe that's not everybody's thing, but it's valuable information for me because I'm going to be configuring... Oh, okay, we fixed that remotely. Um, I'm going to be configuring parts and hopefully using Kerbalism in Realism Overhaul. And uh, just as an example, I reconfigured a TAC Life Support Water Recycler at one point. Uh, science instrument we deal, don't need to... Oh, RCS malfunctioned. Alright, another EVA. Um, I made a water recycler using TAC life support that matched the specs of the ISS, but I added in the, the at least three spares. So the mass of three spares as well was added into the system. But, um, of course, in the case of Kerbalism, I would have to redo that because uh, Kerbalism you want the spares to be a separate part, right? Because uh, that's the redundancy. You don't have the spares as like something that's a replacement component in the original part. That's how I had it. So, yeah. So I have to think about stuff like that. But also, the mass of the initial system is higher than the mass of the spares. And that's because the initial system includes the interface to the rest of the ship. And so, we... Uh, it's a little bit complicated to figure out exactly what to do about that because the spares are actually supposed to be lower mass. Um, that's in NASA documents even. So for for Mars mission planning. So the original system is uh, heavier. So I'll have to consider that. Maybe, I mean, it depends on how many spares are necessary. It sure seems that the life support system breaks down a lot more often around here than necessarily ought to. I don't know about our current RCS... Oh, this is the science instrument, okay. Our current RCS technology. Back in the 60s, the RCS used to get busted a whole lot, especially on Mercury and Gemini. Um, also on Apollo, most famously on the second Skylab mission, uh, they actually had to, the second crewed Skylab mission, not including Skylab itself, they actually had two RCS ports on the Apollo command uh, service module go down. And so they only had two left. And that complicated matters. There was uh, the thought that they might need to be rescued because they might not be able to deorbit with just two left. And so, but they eventually worked it out and none of the other RCS thrusts, they actually failed while they were docking at the at Skylab so um, yeah that was a bit of drama and actually the backup crew I think uh, started practicing the rescue mission and they had to uh, consider reconfiguring an Apollo command module to fit the extra peoples in for the rescue mission of course uh, for the rescue mission they wouldn't be sending three people up they'd be sending two but they needed uh, then uh, two extra seats to carry five back down yeah but it ended up being the case that they were able to come back without any problems. 
And uh, yeah, that tank is still messed up. All right, back to tracking station. But as far as recently, I don't know what kind of RCS thruster problems we've had. Like, have there been RCS thruster problems on the space station? How many RCS problems have there been on the space shuttle? No idea. Okay, we can repair a solar panel on uh, Kerbin Station 1. We'll wait on that. It's got... Well, first of all, I don't. we don't have any Kerbals there, right? <laughs> I mean, let's double check. Um, yeah, okay. No, no Kerbals. So we can't really repair it right now anyway. Reaction wheel on Jewel Relay. We were able to fix remotely. Parachute malfunctioned. Oh, well, that's goners, isn't it? Well, but wait, that's splashed down at Eve. Maybe I should turn off notifications for that one. The more missions we have, the more messages. Oh, well, we should fix the life support system on Gilly Mission 1. The more, mi uh, more missions we have, the more messages we're going to get. And eventually, we're going to be unable to time warp at all. So Kerbalism right now seems to be made more for if you have relatively few missions active. Especially if you do want to know when things go wrong on all the missions. It's just the pod again. Darn it, Bill. You should have done a better job repairing it the first time. Another power kick. Well, inspect it again this time. Practically new. Well, then why is it having so many problems? All right, well, anyway, everything else here seems fine. The solar panel we need to... Oh, the other solar panel popped out even though I left it retracted. Hmm. Okay, anyway, the solar panel that's currently busted is on the station, I think. Bill Kerman has been in space for too long? What the heck? He's mumbling... In... What do you mean in space for too long? Okay, I've got a problem with this. Um... He's only at 14% stress. If he's been in space for too long, that that head thing should be like glowing or something. There should be some indication I should have known ahead of time in space for too long. The crop is re ready to be harvested. Okay, well now we want to check this out. That tank. It, it, it's on grandparent part. <laughs> anyway. Uh, ready to harvest. Okay, well then, um, I guess uh, we, I mean, how much space do we have for food? We have some space. I don't know. We've got more than a thousand units. Let's see. One, eight, nine, eight right now. Harvest. That's it. <laughs> okay, well, fine. Uh, that's, that's all we got. We'll need a whole lot more greenhouses to do stuff, I suppose. Somebody asked whether this was more realistic or the um, planetary base ink one was more realistic. I'm working on that. I got numbers. I asked my audience to help me out finding uh, how much yield we could get from each square meter for corn, wheat, potatoes. Potatoes are important. Potatoes seem to have the best yield of anything that you'll eat in large quantities. Um, I'm sure not eating cabbage all the time. So... Yeah, I'll, I'll turn those out and see what I can come up with and design a greenhouse. Of course, these aren't very big, um, physically speaking. It's only a 2.5 meter diameter thing, so you can't really grow too much in there. It's not like a 4 meter diameter module like on the ISS, so yeah. Alright, well, we fulfilled the contract. Harvest food from space, in space. Okay, we should send another uh, crew vessel. We've got more crew here than we've got a return vessel for. Hmm. We should send two scientists up here too. I feel like it's getting about that time. Bill better hold out. It's still a long time before he can get back. Reaction wheel on Eve Probe 2. It's okay, I need to disable all warnings from Eve Probe 2. He, uh, the life support again failed on Euphrates Station, so this is going to be a bit of a pro Now, of course, there are a lot of life support systems on Euphrates Station, so... Hmm, but still. Every m few months, jeez. 
We should send two scientists and an uh, engineer. We'll bring the engineer we currently have there, I think Dunfred, back because we need to fill the rescue contract. I mean, basically, when you think about it, crops take a lot of space, so it's no avoiding that. That's why you have so many square miles of oops, cropland. Can you grab? Okay, now repair. There we go. Let's inspect a treadmill too. Practically new. You always say that. Well, we might as well board here then. Data transmitter. We were able to fix remotely. Coronal mass ejection hit the EVE system. Maybe it's radiation that's causing Bill to be a little bit weird. All right, let's monitor. Still five rads per hour. He's up to 30% radiation now. That's on an EVE mission, which is a short duration mission, mind you. Now, closer to the sun, but I don't know if, if the radiation exposure actually diminishes by distance to the sun around here. I haven't double checked that. Maybe a coronal mass, yeah, oh. Well, I guess we're gonna find out. So it was five rads per hour at Gilly, right? Now let's see what it is at Minmus Station because we've got coronal mass ejection hitting Kerbin now, which sort of makes sense. You would think that if, well, it depends on the direction. There's this direction and that direction, I guess. No, it's still five rads per hour. Greenhouse, excessive radiation. I don't even know if we're growing something new. Um, so what do we do about excessive radiation when we have the greenhouse there? Let me visit it, I guess. But yeah, so the problem is the radiation exposure is constant for the coronal mass ejection. It doesn't matter how far away you are. And of course, distance away from the sun, it should dissipate the radiation by uh, surface area. So, of course, distance squared, uh, inverse of distance squared, as you would expect. Um, so can we like dump this harvest? It just started. Emergency harvest. We got eight food. I guess during excessive radiation, it just doesn't grow or something, but I think an emergency harvest is the best idea. Oh, we did have a failure, didn't we? Ah, this solar panel. That's the main solar panel. Dunfred. It's a bit choppy. But, yeah, I mean, it's actually pausing the game every little bit of time. Why don't we get Dunfred back in this pod? Or Well, I think, yeah, yeah, this room. Okay, good. Let's sort our Kerbals out, and uh, we'll send the new pod over now. Let's not wait any longer. Let's begin those operations. We need some time before the Duna window anyway. We will leave one pilot here. So, wait a minute, who do we have here? Valentina, Philippe, Dunfred, Sherber. Valentina needs to come back. We're, uh, she's not going to be able to do uh, long like a mission to Duna if we let her sit here with all the radiation. Okay, so the people that we want to bring back are in that spacecraft. That's fine. Let's launch our new mission. Okay, so we have Bob, Deffen, and Jessely here. And so two scientists and an engineer. And I decided to add more boosters to the bopper. So we've got six instead of three, and that'll give us better delta V margins than we had last time. I wasn't thrilled by that. Also, better thrust weight ratio initially. Uh, downside is that these are all reliance, so we don't have a whole lot of gimbling. And uh, so I added little basic fins to the edge of the boosters just to hold prograde and so we don't flip. But uh, yeah, it's got to be a bit touchy. So launch. Uh, it's wobbling, all right. Um, uh, come on, come on, come on, gimbal, skiff, gimbal. Uh, all right, spin stabilize, spin stabilize.
Okay, I think we avoided the flip at least. Not the best launch ever. Okay, separation. And throttle up. The skiff should be able to do most of the transfer burn. So of course with no pilot on board I have added a probodobodyne hex under here and more battery power which I thought we needed. Okay, let me leave it right there. I want to deorbit the nose cone. Okay, we have safely made orbit. Okay, well, we have an initial approach and don't know if we can fine tune. Well, it's minimus. I don't need to worry too much about the relative inclination with respect to the station. And it's not going to cost too much to get there. Okay, so, well, the node is pretty quick here. We're going to do most of it with this stage. And this stage only has 44 seconds left. So we can wait. Okay, separation. Okay, now we have to do the mid-course adjustment. Otherwise we don't really have an encounter with Minmus. So off we go. Okay, and yeah, this time we're approaching Minmus with uh, some decent Delta V. So slapping on the extra boosters worked. Felipe Kerman has been in space for too long. I wouldn't start mumbling to myself if I only had 10% stress. What is this about anyway, hmm? I don't start mumbling to myself until I'm at least at 30% stress. And that's not really a sign of mental incapacity, mind you. I mean, just recording the videos, I'm more or less mumbling to myself half the time. Okay, well, we're uh, crashing into Minmus right now. That probably needs to be fixed. Oh, we don't have electric charge. I probably should have done something about that. Oh, wait, we're, we're spinning, we're spinning. Okay, now we're getting electric charge. Wonder how it uses the RCS system without any electric charge. Let's not think about that too much. Okay, that'll be a good start. So let's do this burn first. Can't say I'm thrilled by the RCS thruster sound, but okay. Okay, well, never have I assembled so many parts together in KSP 1.6. I've assembled plenty in other versions, but... Well, straight in. Not even a whole lot of magnetism wiggle. So, how many parts is this? That's what I wanted to know. 354. 354 parts right now. Eh, pretty smooth. It's in yellow, of course. But not bad. Not bad at all. Okay, so... I guess we should bring our other group back, right? So this is, this is the new crew and this is the old crew. Well, first things first, we should, uh, well, there's not that much more propellant. We could probably use it for the RCS on the way down anyway. Um, it's got some inside the pod though. Okay. So that will leave two tanks on here on the top that have mob propellant. And also the mob propellant inside. That should be plenty of liquid fuel and oxidizer to get back and I don't want to skimp on that. So, yep. Yeah. I guess we're good to go. Well, let's check the food, water, and oxygen. Mm. There's also a life support tank up here underneath the docking port. 
I would expect it to be proportional, but... Uh, it's a lot of food and water. And we've got the oxygen tanks here. Yeah, all right. It looks good. Um, well, before I do that, let's get the scientists into the lab and start churning that. Mm -hmm. No samples to analyze? We've got plenty of data. Oh, we can't access the Science Junior stuff now either. This seems annoying. I don't want to clean experiments. I want to check out the experiments. And having the data here apparently doesn't do what I thought it would do. I thought it would allow us to do the science. Nope, I don't know what to do about that. All right. Well, apparently we can't start out the science just yet. Let's bring Val and the rest back home. We may have to do a second burn to actually get into the atmosphere. I don't know. Okay, and going back home. Oops, I had shut down the engines. Of course. Now, going back home. Okay, we are going to have to do a second burn anyway. Alright, close enough to my standard 26 kilometers. So we should be good. Tough to say what our landing conditions will be like though. If we can sort of aim down this trench, that'd be nice. That'll minimize any possibility of hitting mountains, but I think we're going to go past that. Okay, separation time. We could use the fuel to slow ourselves down, but I won't. Just to make, uh, This is the first test of this particular spacecraft, so I want to make sure that it's okay, even if we use up all the fuel down here. So, normal. Electric charge is stopped off. Separation. Separation. It's too bad I don't have Final Frontier in here to give them medals or something. But at least we'll complete the Rescue Dunford contract. Okay, no problems. About 150 of later lost. We started out with 400. Seems like the terrain is fairly mild. Okay, parachute deployment. So I didn't bring back that extra data because I'm still trying to figure out how to get it into the science lab. If you guys can tell me how to do that, or if it's doable or not, that would be good. Maybe I just messed that up. I suppose technically we could like run the RCS too. I don't know, that's not helping at all. It does make us lighter a bit, but not that much. It's only 100 second ISP down here. Anyway, recover. Well, we got parts back. Uh, Dunford got 8 XP. Uh, he already got the level up anyway because we do have level up in flight on. Uh, it's very, very dark at the KSC right now. And yeah, we should have fulfilled the contract. Yep, all right. So next, uh, let me double check on the greenhouse on Minma Station, on Euphrates Station, to see whether that's running properly or not. Okay, yeah, it seems to be all right. It's got a time to harvest thing there. Seems to have reset after the radiation stuff. Um wonder why it's limited crew control and I guess we're on the opposite side of Minmus from Kerbin, that's why. We've got plenty of probe cores and antennae after all. Okay, so that's fine. These guys still can't get started in the lab. Right, yeah, so I will need to figure that out. But I think I need to build our Duna mission. We have some Duna contracts, and that's in 60 days. So I'm going to time warp to that. And we're going to try and launch 
uh, the mission to make orbit around Ike, to return to Kerbin from orbit of Ike, and transmit scientific data from space around Ike. What happened to the station around Ike? Did we have a station around Ike contract? Uh-oh. Did adding the basis and stations contract pack eliminate that? I think we should check. Or did we pass the deadline for that? That doesn't seem right. Or did I not pick it up? Maybe I didn't pick it up. Or maybe I never had a contract for it in the first place. So many possibilities. Oh, it's all sorted out because of contract configurator now. Duna Space Station. Hmm. Okay. I wanted to get to Ike, but if it's asking for Duna Station, we could go to Ike first and then move it to Duna? What does it say? Altitude below 140 kilometers. Docking node. Support four Kerbals. Power generation. Optional cupola. Mobile processing lab and vessel type station. And we have to orbit for two days. Okay. Okay, so I have time warp to the Duna window and this is our Ike station. I don't know if it's got enough fuel for everything, but we'll see. We'll prioritize based on the alarms. Uh, boy, we still haven't got, well, the alarms are pretty generous, 24 years. Uh, yeah, I actually, is it got, does it have all the alarms? Doesn't seem to have the one for launch to Duna station. Isn't it supposed to create that automatically? I don't know. Anyway, oh, maybe there's no deadline for that. That's why. Okay, so we've got module with docking node. Uh, we we have, well, I mean, the cupola was optional. Hopefully it meant that. And we have one science lab. Yes, we even have a greenhouse because why not? So we've got a greenhouse and everything should be good. As far as Delta V is concerned, uh, we've got the stuff to launch and 1,800 after that. So yeah, and our launch system has a core with four skiffs and then two mainsails on the side. Otherwise, this looks a lot like the stations we've already launched out there, especially the Minma station, but it's, uh, it's a little bit different in minor ways. Like for instance, we've got longer range antennae. You know, I've lightened it up in some ways. It didn't have to carry any liquid fuel, right? There's no liquid fuel requirement. So that saved us a lot of mass because that liquid fuel is a pain. So we're only carrying fuel that we can actually use right now. And also there was the requirement that we have to um, transmit or recover uh, science from space around Ike Oh, uh, return to Kerbin from orbit of Ike. That's the one. And since we have to return to Kerbin from orbit of Ike, but it doesn't say crude, we have this little return capsule. That's what's stocked on that end. So that's our sample return capsule. So we fulfill that part. Okay, throttle up. SAS is on. We are a little bit early, four days early for the Duna window. And that's just in case the alarm clock window isn't quite right, uh, depending on eccentricity. Anyway, ignition and launch. Fairly patient launch, so that's why I budgeted the full 4,000 for the launch pit. Quite an unwieldy stack, really tall. That's one thing about the main sails, they do allow for tall rockets. Um, so do the RS-25, the Vectors, the Vector engines. They have good thrust to weight ratio and don't take up too much area. Okay, it's been a little bit threatening to flip, but uh, I think we can hold on to it here. Okay, booster set. And they're clear. We might be able to do a good chunk of the transfer with this stage, too. Turning's going to be a pain.
that might be important for making sure that we can do the Duna bit and the Ike bit, so. Might have wanted to have the mainsails lofted a little bit steeper than we did. Yeah, we really ought to have been much steeper. Well, yeah, that was not the most efficient launch I've ever done. Okay, power probably won't diminish on a single orbit. We've got four solar panels instead of the usual two because Duna and further away from the sun. Oh, it's not just the sparks, there's a cheetah there, thank goodness. But still, it's low thrust weight ratio. Okay, separation. And the cheetah. We're just gonna use the cheetah. The sparks are the backup engines, but they're lower efficiency than, than the cheetah, so we don't want to use them just yet. Unless it's absolutely necessary. Let's get all the antennae we have. We've seen a lot of failures on our probes. I had to do a little bit more time warping and there wasn't any failure on our occupied stations, but I think there was a Kerbin station failure and some probe failures as well. Uh, though they said we could repair them, we don't have anybody there to repair them, especially for the jewel probes, so we'll have to see the state of those. This little guy has a little bit of return fuel here, and we should lock that right now. <laughs> Uh, we need to top that off. So another reason seeing what would happen with the stations around Minmus and Kerbin for an extended period of time is because we're going to be sending this out all the way to Ike or Duna and we're not going to be able to repair it like this. It's going to have to hang out until we can send crew to it later. So yeah, it was a question of do we have enough redundancy? You know, we have the the double reaction wheels and everything. Be sort of nice if I could get us into orbit around Duna, right? But that doesn't seem to be what's happening. Ike encounters are cheap though, so maybe I should just go for the low Duna pass instead. Okay, now that's 141 there, 325 there, and then we have an Ike encounter over there. But for the contract, well, altitude, it says altitude below 140 kilometers. What does that mean, really? Does that mean the periapsis needs to be under, under 140 kilometers, or just where we happen to be at the time, we have to stay there for two minutes under 140 kilometers? Because that we can do with this. Now, if we want to pull the entire orbit down below, 140 kilometers. That's a different story. We can still do it. It's just gonna cost a whole lot more and I'm not sure we can get the Ike part of it. Oh well, we'll uh, do this for now and we'll see. It's possible we could separate the return pod, the little capsule at the top, to do the science data from space around Ike and the return from Ike all on its own. I'm not entirely sure how much Delta V that has, but it seems like it ought to be a lot considering it's so tiny. Anyway, so for now I'm going to add this maneuver that we're going to do in Duna SOI and we'll pay attention to it when we get there. I think this will be our only Duna mission for this round. It's pretty big and expensive and risky. So I'm going to get rid of that. And I think with this, I'll wrap it up here. Uh, we've learned a few things. But uh, next time, we will bring back our Gilly mission. We have to retrieve the Kerbal from the surface of Gilly. Hopefully, our, uh, our engineer aboard our Gilly mission isn't too insane so that he doesn't like kill the new Kerbal. Uh, and then we're going to have to bring uh, those guys back. And in the meantime, you guys can tell me about the science situation 
on board the Minmus station. How exactly do I get the research lab started? Do we have to get new science from Minmus? Is it that I can't use this? I should have like set it for research in the first place and the fact that it's stored in the research lab doesn't help. I'm not sure what's going on there. So uh, we want to make sure that we do the proper science over there. And if we have to go back and get some more from Minmus, we can. So on that note, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.